What's up guys? So this probably doesn't come as a shock to most of you, but I spend a lot of time sitting in a chair. And I mean a lot of time. My own mother once mistook me for Stephen Hawking. Hell, if both my legs became paralyzed today, I probably wouldn't even notice until next year's CES. So with all this time I spend sitting, usually at my desk, you would think that I've got some fancy ergonomic office chair with all the bells and whistles. But the reality is, for the last five years, I've been using this. Needless to say, I'd be more comfortable in a wheelchair covered in poison ivy, and less embarrassed to be caught sitting in one for that matter. Over the years, this economical office chair has seen hard times. The leather has become stretched, cracked, and shredded to bits by my two insidious cats, and the padding has become so flat it competes with a girls' junior varsity volleyball team. Well, if you watched any of my recent CES coverage, you probably noticed that one of my sponsors was Need for Seat, a company that makes quality chairs for esports and office use. So when they offered to send me their Maxnomic Classic Office model for review, I jumped for joy as high as my misshapen spine would allow. Now, more importantly, it was also made explicitly clear that under no circumstance would Need for Seat sponsorship guarantee them a positive review. So just remember that I'll be sharing my genuine opinions of this chair before you start a sandstorm in the comments like Darude. On that note, what exactly can you hope to expect when purchasing one of these high-end chairs? Well, the box it comes in is friggin' enormous, with a hefty weight to boot, so it's probably best to find someone to help you relocate it to a room with lots of floor space for building. Now, this being an office chair and not a hard drive, it's not exactly fragile, but all the pieces still come well packaged with foam and bubble wrap, keeping them safe in shipping. Assembly took me about 35 minutes and was fairly straightforward with the super clear step-by-step -step instructions. Read them carefully, though, especially the part about not lifting the backrest bar when fixing the backrest to the seat. I missed that warning entirely without anticipating the force of the spring as it whipped the backrest brackets forward and took the bolt I left dangling in one of the mounting holes with it, resulting in a catastrophic first blood. Perhaps that's why the manual advises against making this a one-man job, especially if that one man is an idiot. Truth be told, it is nice to have someone align the heavy pieces in place when bolting things down, so definitely grab a building buddy. One quirk during my build is that several of the small washers were bent out of shape creating additional thickness and keeping the bolts from reaching the threads of the backrest. Fortunately, I was able to make contact by tossing them out altogether and sticking with the large washers. But enough talk about the assembly already. How does this thing actually feel? What makes it special? And why the hell is it almost $500? Yeah, these things don't come cheap, which is certainly a high barrier to entry for the common pleb like you or I, but this price point actually falls right in line with competing gaming chairs of similar quality and feature set. First of which is the premium look and feel that this chair just radiates. Rarely ever does the office chair steal the show from your gaming desk or office, but this thing looks really pretty, even when it's not directly beside my old chair. The classic office model sports a neutral two-tone black and gray color scheme lined with polyurethane leather and a high-quality stitching job that looks simply awesome. While it's definitely sporty and stylized, there's also a touch of class and elegance that keeps it from looking too juvenile and really ups the curb appeal of your overall desk area. Another perk you get here that's often overlooked when it comes to office chairs is durability. Now, of course, only time will tell how the leather holds up against the constant friction of my back and ass cheeks, but at its core, the chair uses a tubular metal frame for support and rigidity, whereas cheaper gaming seats often use thin pieces of plywood to shave down costs. The casters and aluminum base are also incredibly sturdy and can probably be used to kill someone if thrown like a frisbee. But perhaps the most important feature here, in my opinion, for what it's worth, is comfortability. And thank God Need for Seat has delivered in this arena, or else I'd be stuck with two chairs that had less support than Donald Trump. First and foremost is the molded cold foam on the seat and backrest, which has the proper amount of firmness for my taste. The foam is also plenty thick, so my back and epic glutes never have to feel the internal metal frame. Now, if you're expecting the chair to feel like a Tempur-Pedic mattress or a lazy boy, you'll be severely disappointed. But a quality gaming chair isn't designed around getting a good night's sleep or the optimal position to eat popcorn in. What the seat prioritizes is support over long periods of desk use, and by managing to pull that off, the chair is subsequently made comfortable. The foam is only half the story though. The curved sides on the backrest do a fantastic job of keeping you centered and offer additional support when leaning to the side. I was also surprised to see how much taller the backrest is than on my old chair. As long as I've owned that thing, my head has really never had a place to go, so the extra length of the Maxnomic and the included headrest pillow is a very welcome addition. On the right side of the backrest is a knob for adjusting the chair's built-in lumbar support. While the knob is sturdy and turns with ease, I do wish it was a bit less awkward to reach when sitting down. In its defense, this feature single-handedly earned the wife's seal of approval despite the chair's aesthetic not matching the drapes in our foyer. This along with built-in back pressure adjustment do an excellent job of keeping your spine aligned and back comfortable. As I mentioned earlier, the chair has a lever to adjust the incline of the backrest, ranging from fetal position to someone should really be behind me right now. 
Apart from the Hunchback of Notre Dame, I can't see anyone complaining about the range limitations here. And I know I said these things weren't meant for sleeping, but this chair makes the prospect of an impromptu power nap all too real. Apart from the backrest, the entire seat can lean back freely for days or be locked into place with the left side lever underneath the seat. The lever on the right handles the chair's overall height adjustment, and while NBA players should feel right at home, even at the lowest height position my feet dangle in midair, which make me look like a hairy child on a swing. I'm not sure if all the Maxonomic seats are like this, but this is definitely one of the few oversights with the classic office model. Now so far it's clear that our backs and our butts are well taken care of, but the chair also offers a pair of flexible armrests that can be adjusted in virtually any position of your preference. Distance between the armrests can be changed using either the mounting strips beneath the seat, which do require you to loosen the bolts, or by holding down a button and sliding the arm pad itself. Additional easy-to-reach buttons allow you to slide the armrest forward or backward, pivot them inward or outward, and adjust the height for a wide range of flexibility. The pads are made of a firm but soft padding with a slight curvature to match the shape of your arm, and the metal armrest posts are built like tanks. The rigidity of these, however, are somewhat overshadowed by the wobbly plastic pieces of the upper armrests. While I doubt they're at risk of breaking anytime soon, the loose fit and plastic buttons certainly make the armrest feel like the weakest link of this product when compared to the rest of its quality parts. That said, they are comfortable and the adjustability to suit my gaming work or jerk needs is pretty damn sweet. Overall, this is by far and away the best office chair I've ever owned, or even sat in for that matter. I mean, when it comes to support, comfort, flexibility, and durability, the Maxnomic really delivers on all these fronts, while giving your setup a facelift that says, I ain't no filthy casual. Granted, it's also the most expensive chair I've ever touched with my own two hands, or my butt, but much like the high-end headphone market, game-changing innovations in office chairs are few and far between. So if you can make that initial investment, I'm pretty sure that you'll enjoy sitting on your ass in front of your computer more than you ever have before for years to come. But let me know what you guys think of this thing in the comments, and don't forget to toss me a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Before you go, you can check the description for awesome sauce shirts, not like this one, and feel free to bookmark my Amazon affiliate link in the little. That's awesome, cow with Awesome Sauce Network. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see y'all in the next video.